I mean, uh, some plastics, uh, bioplastics, uh, as we call them, could be made from certain sorts of use agricultural lands in their production, for instance. Maybe they use a lot of water. Um, there can be all sorts of different concerns with the way they're made. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of different types of ways to make bioplastics from different sorts of plants. What, what we're doing at Mango Materials is using methane gas, which can be a waste gas from wastewater treatment plants or landfills or agricultural facilities. Using methane gas is a really different story than using corn. Um, you know, maybe you're converting the corn into sugar into some other chemicals that you ultimately make a plastic out of. Uh, it's really hard to compare those two materials. And at the end of the day, the plastic that you make is often different as well. So the common bioplastics that people often um, are familiar with, such as this cup that Adam has that's made by Nature, Work at Nature Works, it's a polylactic acid, based, a corn-based plastic, that's really different than the type of plastic that Mango Materials is producing. It's a different polymer, it has different properties, it has different end-use properties. So the way it breaks down in different environments is different. Um, for instance, that material needs industrial compost. It needs oxygen, it needs uh, a certain infrastructure to break down. The type of biopolymer we're currently producing actually can break down under anaerobic conditions. If no oxygen's present, it can break down in the ocean. That, that plastic's not gonna break down in the ocean. And I think, I think Molly's Lowry. bringing up a really good point here, which is um, bioplastics as a whole can give people, consumers, a false sense of responsibility. And I think that's very important. This plastic that I'm holding in my hand, which is an ordinary drink cup made out of a, a bioplastic, PLA in this case, um, when people use these things at a concert or a place like this and they throw it in the trash, people think that this thing is going to biodegrade. And it doesn't. It's going to be there decades or centuries later, just like the red solo cup. Okay, because, you know, as, as was said, it needs an industrial compost. It needs heat and moisture in order to break down. And so I think that's really dangerous because there's millions of these things around right now and people think, oh, it's biodegradable. I'm just going to chuck it. And it perpetuates the single use uh, behavior of using plastics and chucking them away. When really what we've got to do is we've got, if we're going to use something like this, we've got to pair it with the ability to get all of it back so that we can reuse it.